about marriage that look don't be deceived by people when you want to marry these are the qualities you look for and this is the type of spouse you need the mother of your children this is what you need and this is what needs to happen and so on and please if there is anyone you ever show an interest in before it is too late please can you talk to me and we will help you we want goodness for you we don't want evil for you it is time we open the doors of that type of communication with our children because the world is changing i have come across cases where people tell me that i am ready to sacrifice my parents but i'm not going to sacrifice this girl finished when you hear that you start thinking there is something wrong you don't need to sacrifice your parents i will talk to them then when you talk to the parents they say no way is over my dead body so i tell them just pretend to be dead for a while and it will happen So this is what it is. Communication needs to be taken to a new level. There is lack of communication in most homes because even the husband and the wife don't communicate. How are we going to communicate with the children? Sometimes the mother is very close so she knows everything and the father disagrees with most of the things so no one talks to him. So now what happens is it already polarizes the situation where everything that you want to get done you just tell your mother about. And everything else, you might want to talk to your father maybe. May Allah protect us. Communication is of utmost importance. We need to open the doors. They might come with something absurd. I had a case where a man came to me, a man came to me, and he told me, you know, my child is gay. My child is gay. 18-year-old boy is gay. I looked at him and I said, look, we can counsel him, we can talk to him, we can try and see what depth and, you know, why are you saying this? He says, no, I just heard from someone and I beat him up and I broke his bones and he has now been hospitalized. I told him, brother, that's not the way to deal with things. You cannot take away someone's wrong inclinations by beating them. You can address the issue and you can tackle it intellectually and you can convince them and talk to them because it is a free world. Otherwise, they'll go away. And there are many people who are ready to give them refuge. So when I went to visit this young man, he was in a very poor condition. He was not prepared to give up anything. He admitted. He says, I'm admitting, so what? I've already been beaten. My bones are already broken. Now what? What more can you do? Kill me. Kill me if you want. You know, this statement comes out of some children. And it took a long time, Alhamdulillah, we succeeded to talk to him over a period of time. And Alhamdulillah, now he is married with children. But what I am saying is, you cannot solve a problem with violence. Never. Not in the home. Violence is a sign of weakness and insecurity. When a man comes and wants to beat people, he himself is foolish. He is insecure. He has nothing besides his, his, the, the, the venting of his frustration through, through physical means to offer. That's a sign that he's not a man. He wants to beat people up. Violence in Islam does not resolve any matter. Never. It doesn't solve a problem. It will compound the problem and create even a bigger problem. Because if you have a person who for example believes that 5 plus 5 is 11 you cannot roll your sleeves and start beating them you need to sit them down start drawing things maybe get two little buckets put five fruits in one and five in the other tell him now please can you count them he will get to 10 and stop you solve the problem you thought of a solution rather than beating him up beating up if beating up taught people that five plus five was ten today before the o-level exam we would put all the children in one line and give them ten shots each and after getting whacked they would go and know all the answers that's not how it is rather you need to talk you need to explain you need to come up with intellectual solutions you need to come up with you using your brain. You need to come up with something that the child will be convinced about. Because there are two things. A child either listens to you out of fear 
or the child is either convinced and does it. And in Islam, we are taught to convince the child. When Salah is read, when Salah is fulfilled, up to a certain age, the children might be doing it out of fear. But after a certain age, you need to know that they must be doing it out of their own responsibility, understanding that this is what is required of me. Because if you are going to force the child by beating the child to read Salah in your presence, the Salah is done. But when you are not there, there's no Salah. Why? Because you beat the child in order to get there. But if you explain to the child, look, Salah is so important. It is an obligation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the one who created you, who gave you the life, the one and so on. And the child watches you doing the same happily, happily. Then naturally you will have a solution to that. And the child will be fulfilling the Salah wholeheartedly. So that is, we were speaking about being fair and equal when it comes to your children. We spoke about communicating with your child. Very, very important. Then the education of your child is something extremely important. What type of schools do you send your child to? Can I inform you why we say that it's very important? There are two environments inside the house and outside the house. Nowadays, the environment outside the house has a bigger impact upon an individual than the environment inside. The environment outside has a bigger impact on an individual than the environment inside. The friends have a bigger impact than the parents. So what the parents should do is try and help the child choose friends. Try and help the child choose friends by sending them to schools where there are decent people, where the discipline levels are high. Because sometimes we've had parents who come to us and say, I don't know where I went wrong. I tried my best to give my child the best upbringing, but now suddenly after so many years, the child is like this and like that. And I normally tell them, do you know that it is the friends who have a bigger impact? So you might have given them a very good upbringing, but you never took an interest in the friends of your children. We need to take an interest in the friends of our children. Who are their friends? How do they select friends? Have we ever spoken to them about that? What type of friends should you have? Sometimes those friends are imposed on them by the school because they are sitting right next to a person. You don't choose who you're going to sit next to at school. Suddenly that person talks to you every single day and you swap numbers and so on and you happen to talk and visit each other and the qualities of that friend come into your child. That friend might be from a totally broken home, fully confused, and that confusion will seep to your child. Why? Because we did not train the child what type of friends to have and what to take from a friend. You don't take everything from your friend. But we never ever spoke to our children in this regard. So it's important to know that where we send our children plays a big role in determining what type of a child that child will be. Also, what is of prime importance is when we develop a link with the ulama, when we as parents have a link with the scholars of deen, naturally our children will incline towards the scholars. When we are distant from the ulama, when we have nothing to do with the scholars of religion, when we are far from them, when we speak ill about them, the children will be the furthest away from the scholars of this religion. And that is dangerous. Also, we need to, as I said yesterday, we need to strike a balance between secular education and Islamic education. 
The secular education will help a child for a few years. But the Islamic education will take the child through life and beyond life after death. Sometimes you have parents who concentrate on the education of their children, spend lots of money, make them something very big, you know, a highly qualified accountant. And a few days after graduation, big car accident and the child died. May Allah protect us all. Did that qualification help the child? No. When the child goes in the grave, is the child going to be asked about accounts? They tell us more about Ernest and Young. Tell us more about this and that. No. In the grave, the religious knowledge will now help. So that is why the child who has no religious knowledge will curse his or her parents. That Ya Allah punish them. Because they taught me something that was not even going to help me. And if it did, it was going to help me for a short while. But they never told me about this meeting of ours. They never told me that I would get into the grave. I didn't know how to read Quran. I didn't know anything. I didn't understand the message of Allah and His Messenger. I was never sent to any institution and so on. So this is why it's important for us to realize that when we attend a function like this, Naturally, our children will also be enthusiastic to attend. But when we are disinterested, our children will also be disinterested. So the link you have with the scholars of deen, inshallah, will open the doors of contentment within your home. You know, I have mentioned a lot. And I have spoken of many points. And I hope and I pray that... I have covered all three aspects of what I had intended to cover. One was the parent-parent relation. The other is the parent-child relation. And the, uh, the third is the child-child relation. It's important we understand all three categories. The most important is the parent-parent. Because if the parents themselves happen to be leading an exemplary life, automatically the upbringing of children becomes easy. Becomes very easy. But if the parents are in... A chaotic state naturally the children will be harmed by that chaotic state and they will be in greater chaos so we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to open the doors for all of us and we hope and pray that we have learned something uh, tonight connected to this topic and we hope and pray that everyone who has come here will take away something and we definitely need to take it seriously we definitely need to take it seriously. Every one of us, there is room for improvement. Tonight when we go home, make peace in the house. Start, start learning how to smile in the house. Start learning to say good statements to your spouse. Start learning to resolve matters. Start learning to stop interfering in the lives of others. Start learning to become people who make others' lives easy, not difficult. So that when you die, people can really say this person lived such a life that they always helped others. They always made life easy for others. We need to start doing this. And the husbands, really, there is room for improvement when it comes to the relations with the wives. And the wives as well. Many wives are guilty of not appreciating what their husbands do for them. The man goes out in the morning and comes back in the evening in order to earn, in order to put a plate of food in front of you. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us all appreciation. And may He make us from those who can appreciate everything that is done for us. Wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabina Muhammad. Subhanallahi bihamdihi subhanakallahumma wa bihamdika nashadu an la ilaha illa anta nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayk. Ya Allah, we ask you to have mercy on us, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, have mercy on us, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, we ask you to open the doors of mercy for us, Ya Allah. Forgive us, Ya Allah. Forgive our shortcomings. We are human beings, Ya Allah. We have a human nature, Ya Allah. We err, we make mistakes, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, forgive us. Grant us steadfastness. Keep us away from shaitan and keep shaitan away from us, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, grant us good health, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, grant us good health, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, those who are sick and ill in any way, Ya Allah, grant them cure, Ya Allah. Those who have passed away, have mercy on them, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, make us exemplary parents, Ya Allah. 
May Ya Allah improve our relations, Ya Allah. Make us exemplary parents and Ya Allah, protect our children, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, grant us all forms of goodness, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, we ask you all the goodness that Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has asked. And we seek protection from all the evil he has sought protection from. Until Musta'an, alayka al balaq wa la hawla wa la quwata illa billahi al-alayhi al-azim. Subhana rabbika rabbil izzati amma yasifun. Wa salamun ala al-musalina wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin.